others speak, and they rewrite pain into strength, the strength to survive, the strength to heal. That's what we saw last night on this program, and then later with your comments on Twitter. During the show last night, I read Jennifer Willoughby's blog post about her experience as Rob Porter's second wife. In that moving and hauntingly poetic piece, she said, and so I stayed eight times. After the show, many abuse counselors said that the reasons Jennifer Willoughby gave for why she stayed are the kinds of reasons they hear all the time. He could be kind and sensitive, and so I stayed. He cried and apologized, and so I stayed. He offered to get help and even went to a few counseling sessions and therapy groups, and so I stayed. He belittled my intelligence and destroyed my confidence, and so I stayed. I felt ashamed and trapped, and so I stayed. Friends and clergy didn't believe me, and so I stayed. I was pregnant, and so I stayed. I lost the pregnancy and became depressed, and so I stayed. And so I stayed was the hashtag for Valerie Solana's tweet, I tr uh, saying, I tried to be a better wife, I had, and I had babies, and I thought maybe I deserved it, and I thought because it wasn't constant and there was no lasting damage, then he did it in front of my son, who was eight, and I left. Uh, Sue tweeted, the, the piece you read about Rob Porter's wife on why she stayed sounds exactly like what happened to me while married to my first husband. Thank God my dad rescued me. I married a great guy the second time around. Last night on this program and on Twitter, I said the Catholic Church John Kelly and I grew up in in Boston repeatedly sent battered women home to their husbands for more beatings because divorce was a mortal sin. Turning the other cheek was expected forever. Mary Ann tweeted, grew up in the same 1950s Irish Catholic culture in Chicago. My father was abusive to my mother. She finally stopped listening to the priests, got a legal separation. I am so thankful she did. Youngest siblings don't recall the abuse. I do. Sandra Barron tweeted, this is not just a problem within the Catholic Church. I called the police one time when he started hitting me with a pot, only to be told by one cop that if he were married to me, He'd have beat me too. I never called for help again, and it took 20 years to finally leave. Joni V tweeted, the terror, assault on yourself, the, the assault on your self-worth and confidence. I was so stung with recognition, reading the essay from Porter's ex about why she stayed, all the excuses you make for yourself and the self-loathing over what amounts to a lack of courage. Once I left, the world rewarded me. Elba Noriega said, in my neighborhood too, I was a battered woman, and not only did the priest send me home with the man for more beatings, but so did my mother. She kept reminding me of what a great provider he was and how he took us on great vacations. Kate tweeted, when I was a teenager at church, my mother landed in the hospital. I was told she fell down the basement stairs. How did she get a severe black eye and battered face instead of breaking her neck? Lawrence retrieved that memory for me, and I'm wiser now. By the way, she stayed. Colette tweeted, yep, I remember Father McIntyre telling my mother, you made your bed, you have to lie in it. I was a child and I hated him for that. I left the church when I turned 16. Allie tweeted, having worked in a 911 call center, I could tell you some truly terrifying stories about domestic violence. The most calls that come in other than accidents are domestic violence. When you have to talk to a child or listen on an open line, it's very hard. Very hard. Tia tweeted, as a gynecologist, I have encountered many extraordinarily clumsy women with many different types of improbable self-injury stories. No point in reporting if they will deny. Handed out countless domestic violence packets and emergency numbers still waiting for change. Carla tweeted, he was driving. I was in the passenger seat. The back of his big hand slammed right into my face. Both eyes instantly swell and swelled and blood gushed out of my nose. I went silent after that. Nanette said, police used to take my husband for a ride, drop him two miles away, causing him to be more angry when he got home. Enough for me to just shut up the next time. My kids have fortunately blocked out memories of hiding under their beds. Another viewer tweeted, the first time and only time he came at me, he broke my leg. I covered it up, I protected him, but I later realized that I was actually protecting myself from the embarrassment and shame I felt for allowing this to happen, me too. Anne tweeted, at 20, holding my infant daughter in my arms, he hit me in the mouth. She was covered in my blood. 
I looked at her and said to myself, over my dead body will I give her a life like this. Left in the night and never looked back. M tweeted, this is the kind of open support survivors need to see. This is the kind of support that might encourage someone to say, it's okay, I can tell. Thank you. There were many stories told by men of how they rescued their daughters and granddaughters and sisters from abuse. Let's hope that we can all join together in helping women rewrite And So I Stayed into It's Okay, I Can Tell.